Boolean algebras are algebraic systems named in honor of George Bull, a 19th century English mathematician. They have wide-ranging applications in mathematics and computer science, including propositional logic, electronic circuit design, and decision processes. In this lecture, I'm going to discuss their definition and, and one example. And I want to stress the fact that we discuss a general notion of Boolean algebras, not just the binary case that many of us are so used to. Here, here are the elements making up uh, a Boolean algebra. So we have um, two binary operations and we are going to um, think of them in terms of addition and, and multiplication. Uh, they, we denote them typically by plus and dot and they are defined on b times b and taking values in b. We also have one unary, unary operation that we will typically, typically refer to uh, as being the complement operation. And uh, that's an operation defined on B and taking value in B. <clears throat> a Boolean algebra also has two special elements or, or constants, if you like. On one hand, uh, there is a so-called zero element. And on the other hand, there is a so-called uh, one element. And it's going to become clear in, in just a moment why do we call this a zero and, and a one element. But two special elements of this Boolean algebra. And that's what uh, a Boolean algebra is. It's, um, uh, it's a structure consisting of a uh, base set. And then we have these two binary operations, one unary operation, and these two special elements, two constants, 0 and 1. We are going to say that such a structure is a Boolean algebra if the following conditions are satisfied for all x, y, z from b. And we have these um, 10 properties. B1 is essentially saying that the addition is an associative operation. x plus parenthesis y plus z uh, is the same as x plus y and the result addition um, uh, added to z. So this means that the plus operation can be um, really done in any order you like and the result is going to be the same. And the same property holds also for multiplication. So these two properties they are also uh, referred to as associativity. Then we have uh, properties B3 and B4, uh, and, and again, uh, they refer to the same property. We, it's, they say that the addition and the multiplication, they are commutative. X plus Y is equal to Y plus X, and X uh, multiplied with Y is Y multiplied by X. So these are about commutativity. Then we have um, properties B5 and, and B6. And um, if I'm taking B6 first, this is maybe the um, uh, one that, that most of us are, are used to when we think about um, numbers, for example. It's, it says X uh, multiplied with Y plus Z is the same thing as X multiplied by Y plus X multiplied by Z. And this is the usual distributivity property uh, of um, the multiplication with respect to addition. But in a Boolean algebra, we also have the symmetric. We also have the addition being distributive with respect to the multiplication. So x plus parenthesis y times z is the same thing as x plus y times x plus z. And this is an unusual property if you if you base your intuition in terms of the uh, operations on um, uh, numbers, uh, whether they are uh, integers or, or reals. This is not a property that holds in, in that context, so you have to be careful. The distributivity uh, applies in a Boolean algebra both to multiplication with respect to addition and to addition with respect to multiplication. So this is about uh, distributivity. And um, then we have a property B7 that essentially says, you know, if you take the addition and you are adding element 0 to any element x, the result is going to be x. And that justifies um, why we call this special element a zero ele element. Uh, it, it plays the role of the neutral element with respect to addition. And playing on the intuition we have from numbers, having their zero as the neutral element. So we call this also the zero element of uh, Boolean algebra. 
And the same thing um, applies to this special element of a Boolean algebra. It says that if you multiply this special element with uh, any x, the result is going to be uh, x. So again, this justifies the name of this being a one element because it plays the role of the neutral element with, with respect to uh, multiplication. So these are just the, uh, you know, if you like, the definitions of the zero element and, and one element. And then the um, um, uh, properties B9 and, and B10, they uh, define or, or explore the property of the complement. On, on one hand, it says that x plus x bar is equal to 1. And on the other hand, it says that x multiplied with x bar is always equals, equal to uh, 0. Here is one example I want to give of a, of a Boolean algebra. And um, I'm, I'm not going to refer to the binary case. That's something that we always have in the back of our mind. But I'm going to be quick and offer one example that's different than that one and, and um, one example that in fact we are going to use uh, quite much in the next few lectures. The example I want to give is that of a, um, a power set. So uh, what this means is that um, I will take, so the example is going to be um, the power set. So what I mean by this is that we have um, uh, x is a set. And I define the power set uh, P of X to be um, consisting of all subsets of X. And so that, that includes the full set X, it includes the empty set and um, uh, any other subset of uh, X. And the claim is that, the claim of this example is that if you take this power set X and you think about the uh, union operation, the intersection operation, the complement operation, and if you take as the zero element the empty set and as the one element the full set, this structure is a Boolean algebra. To prove this, we have to show that the properties B1 all the way to B10 uh, hold for this structure that we just introduced on, on in this example. Now the properties B1 to B4, they are about the associativity and the commutativity of the usual set union and set intersection. And this we know very well that they hold. They are indeed commutative and um, uh, associative. So uh, that's, a, that's a simple um, uh, observation to make. Then uh, for the other ones from B5 to, to B10, uh, I'm going to focus on this example just on properties B5, B7 and, and B9. And I'm going to leave the other ones uh, as an exercise. They are completely similar to, to proving these uh, B, B5, B7, and, and B9. And so to, to prove uh, B5, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, take um, this, uh, you know, right-hand side of the expression in B5. So it's going to be A union B. Um, intersected with A union C and I'm going to explore uh, what this means. So <clears throat> this is going to be, you know, because it's about intersection, so that's going to be all elements from the full set that happen to be, um, you know, in uh, uh, in the union. So X is in A or X is in B and at the same time, you have that x is in A or x is in C. And um, then you work this out and you realize that this is about these elements that have this uh, property. You see, if you are in A, um, then then it's, it's all good. But if you are not, so there is a chance you are in A and then, then, then it's all good, you are in this set. Or you are not in A, but in that case you have to be um, in B and you have to be in C. Otherwise, you, you are not going to be in this set. And so when, when I'm writing it like this, it becomes clear that 
this is exactly a union B intersected C. And so that's exactly what we have uh, here on the left hand side of, of B5. So, so this property is, is proved. And then for <clears throat> B7, B7 was about, uh, you know, the addition, which in our case is, is union. So uh, it's simply about observing that if you take a set and you do union with the zero element, in our case is the empty set, then obviously the result is, is A. And that's exactly what B7 is saying. And um, for B9, uh, again, it's, it's very similar for B9. It's just a matter of translating what plus and complement mean in our case. So it's going to be A instead of plus we have in our structure the union and the complement of A and, and that by definition is the full set X. So B9 is also satisfied in this case. There are some <clears throat> conventions that are applied typically in, uh, you know, when we work with Boolean algebras. On one hand, um, very often we don't write the dot for the multiplication, similarly like we have in uh, many other cases, uh, for example, when we when you work with uh, numbers. So we are going to skip writing the dot for the multiplication. The other point, the other convention is that the parentheses are going to be used in the following way. Um, we are going to assume that in a Boolean algebra, <clears throat> the complement is the strongest operation. It takes precedence before any others unless you are using parentheses. So in that sense, the complement doesn't have to be, um, you know, protected by a uh, parentheses. It's applied to its operator before any other operations. Then we we are uh, concluding that we are we are having by convention that the multiplication is the next strongest, and um, that the addition is the weakest. So what this means is that if you if you want to write something like uh, this, x dot y plus x <coughs> multiplied with z, this can be simply written as, um, you know, because the multiplication uh, takes precedence anyway, by default, this is going to be considered to, to be done first. And this one also is going to be, uh, by convention, considered to be done before the um, addition. So by default, we can just write xy plus xz. And we are going to understand exactly the same thing as was so carefully denoted here with the parentheses. First, you do the multiplication and then the addition is applied to the result of these multiplications.